perfect charge in this unit we have the next important topic that is coulomb's law coulomb's law basically we have two forms one is scalar form and second is vector form in coulomb's law what is the statement of coulomb's law these are the two charges q1 and q2 separated by a small distance r then force of attraction or repulsion it depends on the nature of charge so the force exerted between these two given charges is directly proportional to product of these two charges and inversely proportional to square of distance between them so the statement is here this law state that force of force exerted between two charges is directly proportional to product of magnitude of charges and inversely proportional to square of distance between both the charges so mathematically we can write that f is directly proportional to product of these two charges and inversely proportional to square of distance between these two on combining we will be having q1 q2 divided by r square or f is equals to k q1 q2 divided by r square what is k k is constant of proportionality the value of k is this is the another term of k 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught and value is 9 into 10 raised power 9 newton meter square per coulomb square this is epsilon naught value is 8.85 into 10 raised power minus 12 reciprocal of this one per newton per meter square coulomb square this is the permittivity of space or free space it means this indicates that the system or the medium will allow the forces to pass through in it if we put these two charges in air then we have the value of epsilon naught as this or the value of k is equals to this much but if we replace the medium say with water then this value will be changed there will be another value or there is another term that is dielectric constant that depends on the given medium so this is the formula for coulomb's law into q1 q2 over r square various numericals will be there in our book so we will be do, will do these numericals later on this is the only scalar form because we have only magnitude here 
in the next topic we will be having coulomb's law in position vector form so that is we have another form that is position vector form for this we have to make one diagram let we have two charges at this point and this point this is q1 this is q2 both are of same nature positive let r1 be the position vector of q1 and r2 be the position vector of q2 and this be the displacement vector between these two points r okay in this form in this position vector form we need to calculate the force on this charge due to this and this charge due to this so what will be the force on q2 in presence of q1 because this is of positive nature and this is also of positive nature so this charge repel this one and this charge will experience a force due to presence of q1 so f21 so we will read it as force on second charge due to first but when this force came into existence then we have to take this displacement that is 1 to 2 r 1 2 okay in similar manner this charge will experience a force due to this one so this charge repel this one in this direction right so that will be force on first due to second and now we have to take this displacement that will be from r to 1 so remember one point when we are going to calculate the force on 2 due to 1 then we have to take distance from 1 to 2 or while calculating the force on first due to second we have to use the displacement from 2 to 1 in case of repulsion. So F12 is equals to force on q1 due to q2 f21 is force on q2 due to q1 and in similar manner we have r12 that is displacement from q1 to q2 r21 that is equals to displacement from q2 to q1 by using triangle law of vector addition we can calculate the value of r21 or r12 suppose we are taking triangle O A P in this manner so while calculating in this triangle O A vector O A plus vector A B I am taking this direction for now so O A plus A B that is equals to O B this is the only triangle of vector addition while putting the values OA is equals to vector R1 and AB A to B it means R12 that is equals to OB OB means R2 so what is the value of R12 R12 is equals to vector R2 minus vector R1 in similar way we will be having R21 is equals to R1 minus R2 in triangle OBA right 
okay next thing using coulomb's law so what is the value of f of 1 2 force on first due to second so that will give us 1 by 4 by epsilon naught q1 q2 over yes this is the main point we are calculating 1 2 this one so distance we have to take r21 r21 that we have uh, to take the magnitude of r21 so magnitude of r21 square right but this is not the complete vector form we have to give the direction of this force that is given by r21 unit vector the same thing which must be here the unit vector of the same thing or 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into q1 q2 divided by that we can write as r21 cube into r21 vector why why we are taking cube instead of square reason is unit vector of r21 is equals to that vector divide by magnitude of that vector this is the only formula for the calculation of unit vector so unit vector is given by unit vector of any vector is equals to that vector divided by magnitude of the same vector so because earlier it was square when we replace the value of this unit vector with this one then square into that power one that gives us cube if you want to write the modulus sign then you can also write so this is the vector form this is f12 in similar way you can calculate f21 is equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 over r 1 2 cube into r 1 2 sorry that is vector and what is the use of this part so you can write the value of r 1 2 equals to r 2 minus r 1 here okay principle of superposition what is the meaning of principle of superposition if we have one charge say test charge and the property of test charge is it is always positive and unity I repeat it is always positive and unity if this charge is surrounded by other charges say q1 q2 q3 and q and so on so the force experienced by this charge in presence of this one will be this one f naught 1 with distance r1 naught and similar this one f naught 2 with r2 naught in same way due to this f naught 3 the r3 naught position vector and due to this f naught n with r n naught so these are the multiple forces and these multiple forces are exerted on the single charge q naught the sum of all these forces experienced by this charge that is known as principle of superposition we have two types of sum one is algebraic sum second is vector addition and we have to use vector addition here because force is a vector quantity that's why so what is the statement of principle of superposition the total 
force experienced by a single charge due to another charges is always equal to vector addition of all the individual forces on that particular charge so f total is equals to f not 1 f not 2 plus f not 3 plus up to so on f not n while putting the values 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q naught q1 divide by reverse of this one r1 naught square plus for this one 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught we have q naught q2 divide by r2 naught square plus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q naught q3 upon r3 naught square up to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q naught qn over rn naught square and so on right in this series we have 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught and q naught common taking q naught over 4 pi epsilon naught common q1 by r1 naught square plus q2 by r2 naught square plus q3 divided by r3 naught square and qn divided by rn naught square this is a series 1 2 3 up to n and 1 1 2 2 3 3 up to n n so we can write this series or this sequence in this type summation i is equals to 1 to i is equals to n and q i over r i naught square so this will be the net force and this is the principle of superposition Miracle. we need to calculate number of electrons in one coulomb of charge or number of protons it may be so for now we are giving q equals to one coulomb and we need to calculate number of electrons we know that charge on single electron is equals to this much you can write the negative negative stands for the electron and positive stands for the proton and according to quantization of charge q is equals to n e so we want n and equals to q upon e so what is the value of q 1 coulomb and what is the value of e 1.6 into 10 raised power minus 19 coulomb so this will give us 1 divided by 1.6 that give us 6 point 25 into 10 raised power 18 so this much electrons or protons are present in one coulomb of charge right in second numerical we need to calculate positive and negative charge in a cup of water so we have to use the same formula but this is a little bit complicated 
because we are provided with nothing we don't know the number of electrons but still we have to calculate the value q so we can assume one thing let us assume amount of water in a cup that is 250 gram you can take another value as well in h2o molecular mass is equals to for hydrogen 1 into 2 because two molecules are there plus oxygen have 16 so that gives us 18 gram right now we can calculate number of moles of H2O in 250 gram that is equals to given mass over molecular mass this is the formula for number of moles and we know that one molecule of water will contain number of molecules equals to Avogadro number so number of molecules in 250 gram of water that is equals to so multiplier of this 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 into 250 divided by 80 right so this will be the number of molecules in 250 gram of water these are the total number of molecules and in one molecule of H2O we have two electrons or two protons with H and 8 electrons or 8 protons with O so total 2 plus 8 10 electrons or and protons so we have 10 electrons and 10 protons in one molecule so total number of protons or and electrons in 250 gram of water so we can multiply this value by 10 6.022 into 10 raised to the power 23 into 250 into 10 divided by 80 this much while solving this we will get 8.36 into 10 raised to the power 25 so these are the number of protons or number of electrons in 250 gram of water and total charge is equals to n into e and we have this much 8.36 into 10 raised to the power 25 into 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 19 after solving this we will get 1.33 into 10 raised power 7 coulomb this will be the total charge or positive you can say or negative charge in a cup of water next this is the numerical we are provided with the two point charges of plus 4q and plus q are fixed and separated by a distance of r in air so First, we have to show the diagrammatic situation of this numerical. This is plus 4q and this is plus q separated by a distance r with each other. Next condition is where should be the third point charge q 
be placed on line joining the two charges so that it may be in equilibrium. So let the position of this Q is here at distance x from 4Q and this distance will be R minus x from Q. The condition is equilibrium should maintain. Equilibrium should maintain means the force experienced by this charge due to this and due to this must be equal and opposite. So let F1, this is the force on this due to this, the repulsive nature and F2 will be in this direction. So let F1 and F2 are the forces acting on Q due to plus 4Q and plus Q respectively. In equilibrium condition F1 should be equals to F2. So F1 what is the value of F1 that is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q1 is 4Q, Q2 is Q divided by distance is x square that must be equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q into Q divided by distance is r minus x square ok. So while equating we can cancel this one and we can cancel this one as well. So we will be having 4q divided by x square that is equals to q upon r minus x whole square. Now we can cancel this q and by taking the square root on both sides we will be having 2 upon x is equals to 1 upon r minus x. On cross multiplication we will be having 2 into r minus x that is equals to x. So 2r minus 2x equals to x, 2r is equals to 3x or the value of x is equals to 2 by 3 times of r. This is the first distance x. So what is the value of x? x is equals to 2 by 3 times of r. And what is the value of another part? This one. One is 2 by 3 r and second is r minus x. r minus x is 2 by 3 r. That, given, that is given by 1 by 3 r. So this is the another distance. So this distance from 4 q and this distance from q. At this point, at this point with this distance the whole system will be in equilibrium. If we do some change like now for this part we have taken this charge as positive. If we will take this charge as negative then still the equilibrium position remains same. 